Hey, it's Lucy. Early this year I was fortunate enough to attend the European Space Agency's annual Outback Summer School in Austria, where around 60 postgraduates or late-stage undergraduates learn how to design their own space mission. I had a fantastic time. My team designed a sample return mission to Ceres, the largest body in the asteroid belt, to better understand its perhaps water-rich subsurface and the chances for life in unexpected places. The mission was selected for further post-outback development at the ESA Academy training facility in Belgium. I was one of 24 lucky students chosen from the original 60 to participate last month, and this video is about what that experience was like. So, post-outback. Our goals for the week were essentially to up the realism of our initial mission, tighten the parameters, draw the blueprints, figure out the maps, basically to show that our mission was flyable. To do so, we had access to the same equipment scientists and engineers use in real space missions. We spent our week at a base called ESET Galaxia in Belgium, where we worked as pairs in different engineering subsystems. My role was specifying the instruments we would fly, as well as their justification and their parameters. This meant I had to fight both as a scientist for the why we needed them, but also as an engineer, which was entirely new to me, for the how. If we wanted a radar to peer through the surface of Sirius to search for pockets of liquid water, or ice, could we fit the necessary 2 meter long antenna into our configuration? If we wanted to return 10 photographs as quickly as possible upon landing on the surface, how fast could we send this data back to Earth? We all quickly realised that every subsystem, from instruments to mechanics, communications, propulsion and so on, they were all interlinked and that no decision could be made without first consulting multiple specialities. And as a PhD student used to independence and isolation, this was sometimes a challenge. For me, the most exciting part about the week was how real the planning felt. Unlike an outback in summer, where our design took place in the local schoolhouse, and where see you at the schoolhouse became the ominous promise of a long, long night, in ESEC we had dedicated desks with microphones for relaying updates, and we used concurrent design software to instantaneously share our latest calculations or figures. We also grew far closer as a team given how well we already knew each other, and meals were always a really nice time for great conversation and shared stories from across the many European nations taking part. By the end of the week we had a spacecraft. Our mission at the original Artback School was named Calatus after the basket used by the goddess of agriculture, Ceres, to carry home the harvest to her people. And here we had Calatus new and improved. Our orbiter now held two cameras for in-depth surface mapping. We had a thermal mapper, which would detect changes in surface heat that could point to some recent geologic activity. And we had our radar, perfect for probing what was going on just below the surface. On our lander, which was designed to touch down and drill out five samples, we had a camera taking fantastic panoramas, we had a mass spectrometer into which we could feed one of our five samples to understand the types of volatiles that were present. And lastly, of course, we had our drill, which would stow four centimetre scale samples on board for return to Earth. With its work done, our lander would then propel itself back up to rendezvous with the orbiter. The two safely dock and then begins the long journey home to the eager hands of the scientists waiting for them. The mission would only launch in the 2030s, giving time for the relevant technologies to develop. And then the samples would only be returned in the 2040s, as per the distance between the asteroid belt and the Earth. But still, the thought of working on these timescales of three decades to see a mission completed is daunting but not discouraging. The work for ESA's flagship mission Rosetta to Comet 67P, that began in 1994, but the mission only arrived in 2014. My teammates and I are about to write our proposal as a paper, and who knows, perhaps at the next call for mission proposals, or the next, or the next, we might be ready to make the official case for the return to series. Either way, through the Outback Summer School and my time last month at the ESA Academy, I learned more about space mission design than I ever hoped I would, and I recommend the experience to any student, scientist, or engineer. Thank you for listening, and if you didn't catch the first in this series, then a link to the original Outback Experience video can be found in the description box below. Take care until next time.